so many elevators that are so boring that you can transform them, make it into a nice experience just going up and down. And it's such a closed space where people get a kind of feeling bad. But if they had the art around them, they would have something to talk about and something like a moment or just a moment of contemplation. We were actually looking for a bigger space and we were both working with photography and then we found this place and we got so excited that we convinced Candleland to move in and we asked to redo the building. It was a pretty rough industrial building and we redid it into an artwork. We start up with the elevator. Let's do the elevators into art pieces. And then we're like, oh, and the stairways, and the corridors, and the different uh, places. So we invited artists, and also a lot of us redid different parts. Because we're just next to a really beautiful built area, but they lack life and culture and art. They don't have it. So we thought, oh, it's perfect. We're coming in here to fill in that gap. We are going down to the water, crossing the water to the other side, to Södermalm, to the north side of the water, and we're going to a small house, and from that house, we're biking down to Candeland. We are 10 people who found each other on Stop Candeland by accident. It was just a place for us to kind of play around. Everybody was just like so eager to find a place where we could do anything that we wanted to do. What I think made maybe the dynamic in this group was that it was a group of 10 people and we were quite different from one another. I'm a publisher and there's also photographers and artists but it's a mix of people and we didn't all know each other before. So I think that this combination was quite dynamic. Because Candyland is our, we, we can show anything we want. We can also be very uh, spontaneous. The idea is also that it's a non-profit gallery, so that makes us very free to do whatever we want to, and that's important, to keep that feeling of, um, of, of total freedom, uh, so, so that we could show what we really want to show. I think uh, Candyland could not exist somewhere else because Candyland is a reaction against the, the, the Swedish mainstream. Maybe that's because Sweden is so uh, lagom, so uh, um, uh, equal, the, so uh, lagom is, is, a, is a world that everything is supposed to be in between, just like normal. It's like the Tao, you know, the middle way. When we start Candyland, the people came and they were like, you know, when you see the Christ. No, it ha <laughs> never happened to me, but... Uh, uh, okay, imagine you see gnomes, and you say, oh, that's wonderful. The selection of artists, it's like an anarchy, kind of, that each one of us ten get to choose whoever they want to invite. It's fun because sometimes we've had really like famous artists from, from the other side of the world. And sometimes it's just like, you know, somebody's grandmother. So it's like, you know, anything. I ride my bike, I roll skate, don't drive no car. Don't go too fast, but I go pretty far. For somebody who don't drive, I've been all around the world. Some people say I don't know right. Hello, my name is Mariana Cabello. We are now in Candyland Gallery in Stockholm. And uh, this is my work in progress, Ambares. Stockholm is many cities inside one city. Uh, people are constantly traveling in, in their mind and it just brings so many things together in the, in the same place. It's not only about exhibiting something, but it's about exchanging with people as, as it goes on. Art elevators. 
the future, the great future. Yeah.